Hello, you're watching The Defining Moment for creating the culture of conscience. Today we're joined once again by Dr. Rahim Khan, who is a qualified heart surgeon as well as being a senior figure of the Muslim Council of Britain. He's a beloved father of two and has been married to his dear wife for over 45 years. Dr. Khan, thank you for joining us again. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay. It's a great pleasure for you. Well, we're going to continue our series on discussions about Islam and on the topic of changing the Muslim media image. So, of course, we know in the UK that it's unfortunate and unfair that there's been a lot of negative press about Muslims. Now, what's been the misconceptions that have upset you the most? Well, the, this is a wholesale demonizing of a whole section of the community. And I feel very upset because I'm speaking as a part of this community, which in my opinion are most responsible people, most peace-loving people, and uh, they never occupy, they have not occupied in the past many years, I have watched very carefully any adverse headlines in the newspapers or headlines on the television or the radio or anywhere else. They, they mind themselves, to, they keep, their, uh, keep themselves to themselves. In fact, that was one of the reasons I started working in the community. I wanted to bring them out of that particular shell. The sense of responsibility they have shown, as far as I'm concerned, is quite considerable. And for those people to be demonized the way they have done in the media in this country, supported by the present government, government of the day, is something which is uh, very disheartening and heartbreaking and we have made this known to the government and the ministers and secretaries of states uh, at every opportunity and uh, this is a campaign which has been carried out against them and uh, we can't do much about this at all because you see short of creating your own media yourself um, you can't do much at all about this and I have noticed that given time when they have done enough, what they could do, they start correcting themselves. And that is what is going on at the moment. Media is changing the image of the Muslims slowly themselves. So what are the stories that mainstream media should be highlighting, the issues that should be presented in order for us to have a better understanding of Islam and its place in the world today? Well, um, in this area, the media ought to increase their own knowledge and understanding of Islam. Uh, I work with police, with the Scotland Yard. I work with the Surrey County Police as well. We have made sure all the new recruits will have basic induction given to them with regard to all the minority faiths so that they know about Islam, know about Sikhism and Hinduism and all other faiths. I think, first of all, they must increase their understanding of Islam. The way they are talking about Islam and demonizing the whole community and their faith, it gives me clear impression that they have no knowledge of true Islam at all. Uh, the fact the Muslims try to follow as much as for not all of us, you know, there are good and bad in every community, but those who are good, vast majority of them, they follow good principles of Islam. The moral values, I firmly believe, which emanate from the scriptures, <coughs> from the faith and the religion are the only one which can produce the solutions to the problems which we are facing at the moment. So they must highlight that aspect. What is the value of the religion in the life of a Muslim? Five times a day prayer, eating halal food, uh, treatment of the animals and uh, several other things in this area. They should highlight these characteristics of the Muslim. They should also talk about family values and uh, the extended family conception with Islam and Judaism has got in this country and still sticking to that one uh, quite advantageously. So these are the points they must highlight. Um, you know, the government has done some studies in the Islamic schools. The product which comes out of these schools is of highly responsible citizens of this country. They do extremely well in academically. And when they come out, they mix up with every other person quite nicely. They don't start a life of isolation at all, really, as they keep on uh, commenting on, that it will create isolationism. But where is the evidence of that? The government's own studies have shown that the Muslim schools produce 
the qualities of people, academics, which mix up with other communities around very well when they come out of those schools and go to the university, because there are no Islamic universities at all. You know that. So what I'm saying is all these different aspects of real value in life must be highlighted. The valuable contributions that Muslims are Muslims making, are making in commercially society. and uh, in other different walks of life, what contribution they're making. Well, one, one <clears throat> channel that perhaps should be doing that, I'm sure you're aware of the launch of Al Jazeera, a TV channel which is uh, well sponsored or has a wealthy Muslim benefactor. Do you think they are the new champions for a Muslim voice in the media? Well, I thought that was my impression. But when, when, uh, since I've started watching quite a lot of Al Jazeera just recently over the past few weeks, uh, I realize that they, those journalists who are working for that channel, which are predominantly Christians from the West uh, and from Africa, um, these people, they are openly saying quite clearly that uh, it is nice to be a journalist and present the facts as they are without you know changing them culturally completely or adopting a different angle altogether which they are forced into doing by their employers by their bosses in the western media they must denigrate muslims and islam for example they don't have to do that anymore they will present the facts let the people decide what is right and what is wrong so to hear from the journalists, top journalists, including David, Fro uh, David Frost himself, really, was very heartening to me, really. So this bringing a realism in the journalism. You've got to be truthful and honest in your presentation, rather than follow a policy of denigration of certain sections of the community or certain, uh, certain faiths or certain groups. So this is a very healthy thing, in my opinion. They are not uh, forwarding Islamic view by any means uh, as an essential aspect. They're presenting a view which is uh, an open view, clearly expressed. That is the policy of the Al Jazeera as far as I'm concerned. This is the impression I get when I watch their programs. Okay, so we're talking about media and uh, one could even say that's just a, a euphemism for propaganda. Now some challenge that mosques, the places of worship for Muslims themselves, are the epicenters for propaganda, for extremism. What do you have to say about that? Well, that saddens me very bad, very, very severely indeed, really. And if that is the conception the government wants to promote, which the ministers have done recently, and a number of newspapers just carry that, particularly the tabloids, other papers follow a very sensible attitude of understanding what the problem is and how this should be tackled. Now, Muslim Council of Britain had made an assessment of all the mosques and the imams in them and what is being done there. We feel a vast majority of the mosques and the imams which are leading those uh, uh, prayers in those mosques, they're honest to goodness people, they're peaceful, peace loving people, they're doing a very good job in keeping the Muslims out of trouble into a, a peaceful course of life. There are some areas where certain imams, certain mosques need some guidance. It is best provided by Muslims themselves, is our opinion. Muslim Council of Britain gathered all the imams and mosques uh, together in Birmingham. A large gathering took place. We spoke to them, you know, what is right and what is wrong, which is going on in different mosques. And we formed an opinion, I formed my own opinion in that particular um, conference, that there is very little section of the total where it needs to develop a little differently understanding the culture in this country and promoting mixing with other races other religions other faiths and we considered ourselves the best way to deal with it will be if it is left to the muslims themselves government wants to pass a legislation where they they go into the mosques they change the administration they want to change the imam. If he says uh, anything in the sermon which they don't like, they're going to remove him. They put him behind the bars. You know, this sort of, the whole attitude is a very wrong attitude in my opinion. This will be counterproductive and they will not succeed in doing that. They will not succeed. There's something they can try, but they will not succeed. 
Poll tax. Remember what happened to the poll tax? Government uh, started that. No, I remember the riots, yes. Right. They had to withdraw that. So, you know, uh, the problems with the Muslims are very few. They are recognized by themselves, Muslim community, and they are best tackled by themselves, in my opinion. They should be left to them, and they will show you by correcting themselves, by having some observers from the government body, government bodies and other authorities, etc., that it is being done properly and it has been achieved. This, the end product will be there for everyone to see. It can be put right quite easily. But to wholesale denigrate all the mosques and imams is the wrong thing to do. This way you are antagonizing the whole community, which is criminal in my opinion. For the sake of contrast, Dr. Khan, if we look at the Christian community, it seems that they are quite relaxed about laughing at themselves, even if it is at the expense of their own faith. I think uh, Monty Python's A Life of Brian uh, was an example of that, even though at the time there was an outrage. But nowadays it's, it's standard Christmas telly. Um, do you fear that Muslims growing up in the UK and indeed those who are exposed to media across the world will start to develop these kind of relaxed, laissez-faire attitudes? Well, I'm glad you asked this question. This is very important. I've been observing this. Our youth have seen what is the attitude of the general youth elsewhere in a secular society. And a number of them have decided on their own without any pressure from parents or teachers or anybody or mosques that this is wrong. Because the basic brought up within a Muslim family, that brought up is very unique, Ajay. As you know, the Indian families generally, they're all not Muslims, but we have got a family structure. The family unit is the most important unit in the whole of India and Pakistan, in my opinion, among the Asian population. And those attitudes last a lifetime. They know they must have the respect for their mother, for their sister, for their daughters. They won't treat them like any other woman on the street. You know, this is something good. So when they watch other youth making fun of the religion, even Jesus Christ being put on the stage naked with uh, pop singers trying to say, I worship Jesus. You know what I'm referring to. Yes, I do. It has taken place. Yes, I remember. This used to hurt Muslims very deeply because Jesus is regarded as one of our prophets for whom we have got great regard and respect, almost the same as Prophet Muhammad. Similarly, we have similar respect and regard for Moses. So when these, the, these people in the secular society, in that sort of atmosphere, make fun of these prophets, it disheartens, this, this upsets the Muslims very badly. And this is something wrong. If they want to make fun of something, make fun of everything else. But don't come towards the religion to look for a subject for making fun. This is a wrong thing. We've got to educate our youngsters not to do that. It is wrong. Christian, a good Christian will not like Jesus to be uh, slighted in that manner. Dr. That's Khan. my answer to you. Thank you. Dr. Khan, there's been an ongoing discussion in the media about the hijab and the niqab, the veil or scarf worn by Muslim women. What's been your conclusion on this whole debate? Well, the whole subject is a simple one. But government has de decided to highlight this, demonize the Islam, demonize the Muslim community. This is the policy of this government. And that is why what is happening to them, the popularity of the Prime Minister and everybody else, is accordingly what it is for everyone to see. Um, as far as the subject of hijab and niqab is concerned, remember, this is about the modesty of women. I give you a, a traditional uh, story with the Prophet, our Prophet of Islam. A young man came to him. He said, sir, I want to have sex with a, with a female. I don't care who this female is. I must have sex as quickly as possible. I've got intense desire, which I cannot control. I want answer from you. Uh, what would you suggest? He said, come and sit down. He asked him to sit by his side. And he carried on talking what he was talking. And after a while, he re returned to him. He said, yes, you are saying. What is your problem? When he asked him the problem, by that time, because he sat so many minutes, 
the desire for sex was not so intense to him, or at least he won't put it so sternly as he did earlier on. And he said, this is what I want to have. I want to have a sex. What shall I do? He said, all right. If somebody wants to have a sex with your sister or your mother or your daughter, what will you do? Oh, sir, I will go and kill him. All right. Where will you find, where will you find, Prophet asked him, a woman who is not a sister or a mother or daughter of someone already. I fully understand, sir, what you're telling me. I have no desire to have any sex anymore now. And he left. He went away. So we must regard, as, as we do in our culture, in our Asian culture, Asian culture alone, forget about Islam, Asian culture itself, that every woman is a sister or a mother or a daughter. And we must give them the regard. We regard our women folk very dearly indeed. We don't put them on page three, naked. We keep them very dear in our hearts. I have been married to my dear wife for 45 years and my love today for her is just as strong as it was when I married her. So, subject of niqab and uh, hijab is covering the body so that all your female anatomy is very attractive, AJ. God has made the female anatomy very attractive, but it is only for her husband to admire, not for anybody else, particularly the strangers. So in this country, it's a curious system. If the girls can take their clothes off, nobody objects to that. But if women cover their body, they're objecting to that. So basic principle is, Cover the body with flowing robes which do not highlight your anatomy. Next is cover the face as well. Then the people who look at the people who are covering their face, they will regard those women with great respect. They won't touch her or pass any comments, adverse comments on that one automatically. This was the tradition in Arabia. Now, prophets' wives do, did this. They were commanded to do this. So these women, for, there is a small section, a small number of women, Muslim women, if they want to do exactly as Prophet's wife did, what is wrong in it? They say they will benefit quite a great deal the, from this particular action. So they want to do this. And nobody, absolutely no one in the whole, on the surface of the earth has got any right to tell this Muslim woman what to wear and not to wear. They have made this very clear themselves when they spoke to Jack Straw, who started the debate in a very embarrassing manner. They have told him many times, airport officers and the, uh, the uh, immigration officers, they have said, whenever we needed to see a woman's face, we have asked them to lift the uh, niqab and they did so to satisfy us and uh, we solved the problem and the, there was no serious problem to deal with. Thank you, Dr. Khan. We're seeing more and more that religion is being juxtaposed with war, the term terrorist has been prefixed with the word Hindu, Christian, Sikh, and of course we know Muslim. So we hear these expressions, uh, Hindu terrorist. Um, ultimately, if all we are hearing is that religion is a source of conflict, will anyone be interested in understanding religions? Well, the answer to that question is the facts, which are very obvious throughout the West, in America, and across Europe, and right here in this country. In spite of that denigration of the religion as a whole, and Islam particularly, the, the conversion to, rate of conversion to Islam is increasing all the time, as you said in the very beginning of this interview. If that is the, this, this is not the case then. There was an article in Times a few months ago where they said, why our academics from Oxford and Cambridge are turning to Islam, increasing number. Why? And they interviewed a number of these boys and girls. They said, for the first time, we know what our lives are for. Since we became Muslims, we got all the time to work hard, study, and succeed in what we want to achieve. So the terrorism is the greatest misnomer of human history, in my opinion. You see, in the days gone by, when the people didn't like their governments or various reasons, they want to air their views when there are no democratic means available to them, they used to struggle, war of independence. Even we did that before we got independence in India, as you know yourself. 
And we were called, we are, mutiny, we are conducting a mutiny against British at that particular time. So war of independence is now called terrorism because they don't like it. So this is uh, an expression of convenience for Bush and Blair and likes of them, really. And they will regret. And Muslim Council of Britain have been always asking, let's have a full inquiry on this question of the use of terrorism, word of terrorism, what, whether it is justified or unjustified, or get rid of this completely if it, if it is unjustified. Government does want to listen. They don't want to listen to us on this particular subject. But there will be time, I predict confidently, where it will be condemned, use of terrorism to be used against peace-loving people. I think the, the unfortunate fact is that if in this country we're using the word terrorism to associate with Muslims and in India they're using the word terrorism to associate with Christians and, and elsewhere they're using terrorism to associate with uh, whoever, right. ultimately it is all religions who will suffer. And I think that's what we're seeing because in this country, of course, we see more and more that people are turning away in general. They're turning away and they're not looking at religion as a source of a solution, but rather just, well, that's the reason we have the problem in the first place. Well, uh, Ajay, my answer to that question is Vatican in Rome is deeply concerned about uh, churches being empty. Anglican Church is very concerned that the churches are getting empty. You're quite right in what you're saying. But at the same time, uh, we can either observe this situation of uh, secularism, atheism, and moral values, which are do-it-yourself, DIY moral values, and the consequences of such a culture. If you like the, that culture, then you see the destruction, wholesale destruction all around. Industry cannot get highly educated, highly trained people to employ. They're already saying this. CBI has said this, and others have said this on a number of occasions. If you want to return to normality, as the family structure was, institution of marriage was, family unit was, and the education, proper education was, then you got to return to religion. Religion doesn't cause terrorism. These are the followers of certain religion which are misguided, some of them, which create the uh, atmosphere of intolerance and tension and even wars. But religion should not be blamed for what these people do. Religion, all religions are peaceful. This has been decided and um, confirmed by those followers of those faiths and religions on a number of occasions. Last year, in fact, the, the mayor of London, Ken Livingston, he challenged Muslim students to, to face up to the rising tide of Islamophobia. Do you think there has been progress since then? Well, our youngsters, I've seen this change. This change has taken place in the past six months or over a year, perhaps, where increasing number of young men and particularly women have come out. They are very articulate. They already had a full knowledge of their own faith and they know how to defend it and argue their case. Islamophobia is a phobia about nothing. If they are not fearful of the basic principles of Islam, but they are, they are fearful of their imagination, what Islam is all about. They think Islam is what they imagine. There is no Islam. So I think, uh, since Ken, Ken has said this, I greatly admire that man. Uh, he has said this, there are a lot of uh, youth, Muslim youth, who are answering and tackling this problem in the open with the media and everywhere else. I have attended recently many meetings where young girls and young Muslim girls and Muslim boys have uh, been very articulate and has given superb speeches and talks on the subject. So there is a positive improvement of that kind. Thank you, Dr. Khan. Media spin has helped to escalate a climate of fear towards foreigners and refugees, and in very much the same way, I would say, towards established religions or even new religions. So do you think religions themselves need to become more media savvy? No, I, I don't think that is practical at all. And they are not supposed to be. Religion is a religion. That's why this is called religion. 
And if you want to follow a certain principle, you say, this is my religion in ordinary conversation. So that is the value of the religion, Jay. And if I ask you, you're a Hindu and I'm a Muslim, if you ask me, can, uh, can you change Islam to be anything else, any different for the liking of everybody else? I would say no. No now, no tomorrow, and no in thousand years. Similarly, Hinduism, which you believe in, uh, and you understand and you follow and uh, you I want was, to follow that. I was that. raised up as a Hindu, yes. Sorry? Yeah, I, I was raised up as a Hindu. That's right. Yes. So if, if somebody asks you, how about you changing it so that people start liking your religion, you will say no to it. So everyone will do this. Christians will do this. Jews will do this. Everyone will do this. So religions should be left where they are. So Dr. Khan, you feel the, the need for responsible media, that responsibility to a large extent like politics itself, should be left with secular society? No, I don't think so. Uh, if you leave it to secular society, uh, what they're doing is around us really at the moment. Do you like that? Do you like what is happening in the whole country? You see, not so long ago, recently, uh, one of the government ministers said, uh, Muslims must become British, true British. They were inviting the Muslims to come towards the Britishness. What is the Britishness? Family life destroyed? Institutional marriage destroyed? No care of the children anywhere, and no difference between good and bad, people doing exactly what they like. I don't like that life at all. And government doesn't like it at all. Police doesn't like it at all. Even these teachers have started saying that we are finding great difficulty in teaching our children these days because they do not know the difference between the right and wrong. Just imagine, they are getting a whole lot of children going to school who do not know basic right and wrong, do's and don'ts. And that means they want them to know all these things before they come to them for teaching. So really, we can't leave it to them at all, really. Uh, this is something we have got to organize ourselves. You know, the, in this country, I really admire many uh, human rights activists and other people, uh, good organizations, they disregard the media altogether. They work without media and they're progressing extremely well. And ultimately, uh, media will have to change in my opinion. Al Jazeera is uh, helping a great deal in this regard, to be honest and truthful and say what they must say, rather than say what the policies have been decided by somebody else, elsewhere. So the, answer, the simple answer to the, your question is really, we cannot leave this to the secularists at all. We've got to assert ourselves every time, and that is exactly what is happening. My recent contacts with the uh, hierarchy in the Christendom uh, is giving me a lot of hope. The contacts which we are making, Muslims and Christians at the moment, uh, are very substantial in my opinion, which are going to work. Just recently, um, uh, Canon Andrew White has written an article. The moderation is the most awful word. Moderation amongst the Muslims, the moderation amongst the other faith groups is an awful thing because the moderation is followed by those people of those faiths who do not know their faith at all. I would rather speak to somebody who follows and understands his faith than I know I will have many things common with them and we can build up some platform for the world peace. So the expression a moderate Muslim is almost an insult because it's suggesting that all the others are not. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what. Moderate ones are the ones who do not know their faith at all. They'll be moderate, you see. Well, and at the same time, you're not extremism either. If you follow the religion, you're not become extremism at all, really. You're being a just good Muslim, good Christian, good Hindu by following your religion. Well, on that note, thank you very much, Dr. Khan, once again. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. That was nice. Well, you've been watching The Defining Moment for creating the culture of conscience. If you'd like to find out more, you can look us up on the web at www.definingmoment.eu. Thank you for watching and we wish you all the best.